Hello, my name is Randall Eggert, and this is for the class Bad Words and Taboo Terms. This is the fourth in a series of four presentations about how linguists approach grammar. And as we've talked about, there are three different types of grammar that we think about as linguists. There's prescriptive grammar, which as we've already said is the least interesting. That's the one where people tell you how it's correct to speak and how it's incorrect, what's proper, what's improper. Really doesn't tell us much about what it means to be human, though. Mental grammar, that's the one that's really most interesting because it gets into the human mind. but the human mind is a black box, and so we can't get at it directly, which brings us to descriptive grammar. This is where we're trying to model that mental grammar in order to find out how our minds work. So there are three tests for adequacy of a descriptive grammar. We want it to generate all of the grammatical sentences of a language. And we want it to generate only the grammatical sentences of the language. And we want it to mirror the mental grammar for that language in how it's modeling it. So all three of those are necessary. The third one in this course, we're not going to have a lot to say because it's the one that brings us to the most theoretical level. So if you were to go on and take advanced courses in linguistics, you'll talk a lot about whether it is mirroring the mental grammar or not. We're mostly interested in whether or not our grammar can adequately generate all of the grammatical sentences of a language and only the grammatical sentences. So we don't want it to generate sentences that a native speaker would say, no, that, that's not a part of our language. So we don't want it to generate sentences or words that, that native speakers just wouldn't use. But we also want to be able to generate all of the grammatical sentences of a language, and that includes swearing. Now, historically, since the advent of linguistics, linguists have largely ignored taboo words and swearing. It was only in about the last three decades where we find really serious research into taboo words and swearing. And so before that, because of that neglect, no descriptive grammar could be adequate, could be considered adequate. In order for it to be adequate, we need to be able to consider sentences like, I'm trying to cut down on my fucking swearing, let's see how the fuck that goes. There we've got two things, that fucking swearing, which is a really interesting construction, and we'll talk more about that later in the course, and then there's also how the fuck that goes, that construction, the how the fuck, what the fuck, um, why the fuck, those constructions are also very interesting. We won't have a chance to talk about them in this class, but they are worthy of study. Then there's other constructions like damn you, damn you capitalism. That damn you is also kind of interesting because if it were truly an imperative, which it assume, seems to be, right, it's a command, then it should be a reflexive command. Like, watch yourself. Watch yourself. There you've got an imperative with a reflexive. Because whenever you tell somebody to do something to themselves, then you got to have that self on the end of it. But damn yourself isn't grammatical. So the question becomes, you know, why damn you? Why fuck you? We'll be talking about that a little more later in this course. And then another one that's very interesting is this abso fucking lutely which we talked a little bit about in the previous presentation when I was talking about mental grammar. This is also a very interesting construction, and how do we know that the fucking goes right there in, this, in the word, not say abs, after ab, ab fucking so lutely. Nah, that's not good. Absolute fuckingly, not good either. It can only fit in the middle there. And the question becomes, why? So we'll try to tackle that question a little later in the course as well. Continuing on with descriptive grammar, one of our goals is to bring the unconscious knowledge of language to the conscious level, right? So our mental grammar, that's unconscious. We've got it. We know we've got it because we can use language. 
but it's unconscious. And we want to bring that to the conscious level. That's why we're describing it, is to better understand what's happening that, that, at that deeper level. Another thing we're trying to do is provide a window to the human mind. So we've got to bring it up to the conscious level so that we can see what's happening in the human mind. And swearing tells us an awful lot about what it means to be human. And then we use descriptive grammar to compare languages. So we want to be able to see, again, within the context of this course, what are the similarities and differences in swearing, say, in German, in Spanish, in Mandarin Chinese, in Boroshovsky, in Wolof, in Gugu Yimidir? We want to look at all of these different languages and see how the taboo words and the swearing compares in those languages. All right, so a descriptive grammar of any language has to include swearing and more than that, it's just fascinating to see the grammar of swearing.